Welcome to the Zach's Roundtable Review, a discussion of current events affecting investors as well as other topics of financial interest featuring the analysts and editors of Zach's.com. We asked you for your questions regarding the stock market and the economy and the current state of both. You responded by mailing them in, and now we have the answers for you. With our panel members at the roundtable, you know them, but we'll go through their names again just so that there's no confusion, starting with Steve Reitmeister, our editor-at-large for Zacks.com. Then there's Charles Rotblut, who is our senior market analyst. And, of course, Kevin Matris, who is our maestro of stock screens, runs our research wizard division at Zacks.com. So to kind of, this is a real question, uh, and not one that we made up, but to kind of set the stage for the current state of things, and I know we talked about this before, but Kevin, refresh our memory again, if you would. How long did it take the stock market to come back after previous large corrections? I've got a bunch of stats. Uh, first off, as I had said earlier, um, you know, I was looking at the 10 largest declines from the 1929 crash to present. So I have found that the average decline was 42.8%. However, within a year's time, the market was up on average of 55.2% from the lows once they were established. If you were to look at a three-year time horizon, uh, it was up on average of 73.9%. And if you were to go out to a five-year time horizon, uh, the average upswing for the market, once the lows were established, five-year time horizon, the market was up on average of over 101%. Uh, now, even if the indices don't reach their previous highs within those time frames, the fact of the matter is, if you're buying the right stocks, trying to beat the market, you can regain your previous equity peaks, even if the market doesn't necessarily do so. But I think these are very interesting stats that people should consider. And he did so much homework on that, folks, that we actually put him on local television <laughs> talking about that as well. So that's kind of a factual question. Is there anything you can add? Yeah, uh, you know, we, we keep talking about here that, you know, time is on the side of investment. If you have the time, okay, so if you have at least five, ten years until retirement, time is clearly on the side for the long-term investor to be in this market for to, to see rebounds, uh, and uh, you just you, you just have to have faith that, yeah, you might see a little bit lower, but you don't want to miss right. it. You don't want to be on the sidelines when the rebound happens because you will be playing catch-up once again. So, so if you can weather a 10, 20 percent downside from here, you will be gladly, uh, you will be very glad and rewarded uh, what's going to come in the next few years. Charles? I would just say that no bear market's ever the same, and people keep talking about history repeats, and you see similar mistakes occur, and you see similar corrections, and then rebounds from those corrections, but they all don't always happen exactly the like. Mm -hmm. But as Steve just said, you know, investing's really about, is not an, it's not an exact science. It's about getting the risk and rewards in your favor. And right now, I think if you're a long-term investor, the, the potential rewards far outweigh the potential risk as we look going forward. All right. This next question, I think, is particularly timely as we sit here taping this segment on the morning that Fed Chairman Bernanke is calling for a second stimulus package. But the viewer asks, is the government's intervention likely to fail like most government actions do? Yeah, um, yeah I'll, I'll take that one. And uh, there's a good reason for the person to kind of wonder about that. We've all kind of questioned uh, the ability of our government to do uh, appropriate programs and things of that nature. Uh, this was one even for you know the free market folks out there to say, you know what, we're probably better off with the government doing something in this environment uh, to uh, perhaps it be a shallower uh, downturn in the economy. It may take longer given the way the government's doing it, but, but I think that they want to forego some of the severe pain that could have been caused if the free market had to work out the pain, which would have been a lot. Okay, so, so will it fail? Well, if, if failure means would the economy be poor, well, it was going to be poor no matter whether the government did something or not. The question, the question is, will it be somewhat effective? I think it will be somewhat effective in making it shower. That's about it. All right. Charles, what do you think? Something better than nothing? You know, I, there's a couple things with this. First of all, I think when we look at, in hindsight, at what happened, it will be very clear what should have been done. And right now, we're trying to react to things as they develop. However, if you look at 1929, but one of the things that really contributed to things getting so bad is that the government's initial reaction was not to step in and try and keep the problem from growing. 
whereas now we actually have a head of the Fed who has an academic spent a lot of time studying market crises. He understands what happened before. He understands what mistakes are made, mm-hmm. and he's trying not to make those same mistakes. I'm not saying he's perfect. I'm not saying that we won't be able to look back in the in the future and say, oh, we should have done X, Y, and Z. But he's aware of what's happened on this. So, and I think you should also look at long-term capital. The government did step in. There are some criticisms about what they did, but that was a situation when that happened that things could have gotten a lot worse. And Greenspan at the time actually set up a coordinated response to it and really kept the problem somewhat contained. Again, when you look back in history at what happened at a past event, it's easy to pick out the mistakes. But I think in this current environment, doing something and being proactive is better than not doing anything at all. Yeah. Kevin, what do you think? I'm sure that there's, you know, this is on more than one person's mind. There's a lot oh, of people out there absolutely. wrestling with this issue. Yeah, I mean, I know the, the government has a, a long track record of ineptness. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> people have a right to be skeptical. Uh, but, uh, again, they have pulled off successful interventions before. I think I, I had mentioned it in the past, but, yeah, they bailed out Chrysler back in the 1980s. That worked. They bailed out Lockheed Martin in 1971. That worked. We had the savings and loan crisis. They uh, created the Resolution Trust Corporation. Uh, they helped to resolve $394 billion worth of troubled assets. Uh, they did a pretty good job there. Uh, and, again, this is a coordinated effort around the world. Uh, I think somebody, it was sweet who just went through a banking crisis of their own back in 91 and 92, and they put together a similar plan. Uh, and again, it was, it was precipitated by a housing bubble, a credit crunch, mm-hmm. and they were able to, uh, to successfully resolve this problem as well. So I have a lot of belief that this is not going to cost taxpayers as much as the worst-case scenarios that have been talked about, and I think that this is going to work. Here's a related question. Viewer says, clearly there are a lot of layoffs coming in the following quarters. Are we going into a recession even bigger than the Great Depression, such as global depression? And how can we survive if it happens? And what should we do now to prepare for it? I find it interesting that a lot of people are bringing up depression fears, especially when you look at where the economy is right now. We're looking at an unemployment rate right now of a little over 6%. Typically, recessions are marked by unemployment of about 10 to 12%. So we have to have a 50% increase in the unemployment rate just to get to the level of a typical recession. Mm -hmm. And a depression, we're really even looking at double what you normally expect for a recession. So we have to have a massive increase in unemployment before we can really get to depression levels. So I think for people who use depression, it's more of a scare tactic and it's more fear than really what's going on. I'm not saying that unemployment's not going to get worse. I think everybody expects that even after the economy starts to get better, we'll see unemployment rise. How high, that's a bit debatable. But there is a problem. But I think if people right now are scared, going back to what we said before, save more, cut back on your spending. You know, don't go out as much, eat in more, brown bag it, uh, look around your house where you're, not, where you're wasting electricity maybe. There's all sorts of steps you can do to cut back on your spending and trying to preserve yourself. And obviously, if you're in a situation where you're worried about your job security, update your resume and start looking. You, this is a situation where you're facing a crisis. The worst thing you can do is not be active. You can always be active. You can always look at your options. And even if you decide not to take what those, those options are, you should at least have them available to you so you always have a choice. Yeah, I do understand the parallels that people are prone to draw, though, between the two scenarios because that's all they have to reference back to as far as some of the hallmarks being in place in both periods of time. Do yeah. you agree? Um, I understand why they're doing it, okay? But, you know, it's an 89% stock drop during the Great Depression, which we're, we're absolutely not going to see. I will go on record with that one. <laughs> and it's because, you know, this it, is it was, uh, the 20th yeah. of October. <laughs> it, it, it was a ridiculous speculative bubble, right. way too much leverage, and, and, and it had to come out. Right. And, and as Charles mentioned, that the, the current uh, Treasury and, and Fed chairman, they are aware of the mistakes that were made in, in, uh, in monetary policy back uh, during the Great Depression, and they are doing the exact opposite of what happened back then. Back then, they tightened money, and now it's, right. just, it's just flowing out there, and they're trying to force all these things. So will the economy get worse? Yes, absolutely. And I, I think we all know why it will get worse over the coming couple quarters. And then we'll see where we're at. So unemployment rate of 8 to 10%, unfortunately, is not, is not out of the realm of possibility. 
But 25%, like the Great Depression, right. we're, we're nowhere near that, nor would I ever imagine a gain to that level. So I imagine a deeper, extended recession. Uh, but, but here again, we will lift ourselves out. We are in a much better situation than we were back in the, the 20s and 30s. Right. Kevin, even Fed Chairman Bernanke this morning on the day that we're recording this, the 20th of October, was reluctant to even call this a recession right. yet by technical definition, let alone a global depression. Right. Yeah, I, I don't think that we're headed for a global depression. Yeah, are we going to see some tough quarters? I really think we will. Uh, will we see unemployment rise? Uh, yes. Uh, but again, as Steve and Charles had mentioned, the uh, the concerted effort worldwide to identify the problem and actually tackle it and resolve it, uh, I think that this is going to make it shallower than had they not done anything. What should somebody do to prepare for a slowing economy, though? Uh, again, save more money, especially if you're concerned about your company or your job. Make better investment choices. Um, spend less on frivolous stuff and really rethink a lot of your most important and large purchases. Just like the economy me, builds in excesses during times of economic boom times, everybody's finances probably can be wrung out of a lot of excesses as well. So just take a really good hard look at your finances, tighten it up, and people will weather the storm. All right. I think this was a, a good three parts this week. Uh, appreciate all your help on the input. Yeah. And hopefully we've helped you answer questions that are at the forefront of your mind regarding the stock market and the economy. With the whole crew, and remember these opinions are their own and not necessarily those of Zach's Investment Research, I'm Terry Ruffalo.